So in this video, we're gonna be taking a closer look at the Andonstar digital microscope that I have here. I'm gonna tell you about its features and what I like and what I dislike. So let's get into the review. In the box, you'll find the display and camera unit. A bag of hardware. Camera stand. A base plate with flexible LED lights. And a USB cord with an inline remote to control the LED lights. Here we have the rare and elusive mechatronic Neanderthal. To attract a mate, this young single male must construct a functioning circuit. Unfortunately for this young male, he isn't using a custom printed circuit board, so there is only one way this can end. Oh dear. Thankfully this won't happen to you, because you can order a custom printed circuit board from JLCPCB. Starting from as little as $2 for 5 PCBs, they have fast production time and offer a wide range of design options and colours to choose from. So why don't you try out JLC PCB for your next project. To assemble the microscope, first use the included screws to attach the stand. Optionally you can install two spring loaded arms onto the base. Typically these are used to hold a glass slide or a PCB from moving around while you're working on it. Before installing the camera into the stand, make sure the screws are backed off. Once the camera is installed, you can re-tighten the screws. At the back of the screen is the option to install a micro SD card, which enables you to record videos and capture photos. The screen has a good range of motion, with the option to tilt and rotate. The camera stand is constructed from alloy and feels quite sturdy. At the front we have a power button. Mode select to cycle through video camera and photo gallery. Two arrow buttons for scrolling through the menu. The OK button is used for starting or stopping recording. And this button is used for capturing a photo. You can also control the brightness of the LED lights by turning this adjustment wheel. Meanwhile the inline remote also has a power button along with a plus and minus button to control the separate flexible LED lights on the base plate. The scope is powered by a USB adapter that should be capable of supplying at least 2 amps. Camera focusing is done manually by turning the focus ring. While the camera records in up to 1080p video, the display is only capable of 1280x800 resolution. The scope offers up to 260 times magnification, and to give you an idea of what that looks like, we're going to be taking a close look at these tiny SMD components through the scope. As you can see, even if you're working on the smallest of SMD components, the scope has enough magnification to get the job done. Of course, you can also raise the camera to achieve a more zoomed out view. Now let's take a look at some photos and videos captured by the scope. Personally, I'd describe the quality as adequate to get the job done. The photos and video have a grainy appearance to them. 
However, let's be real for a moment, the images are very usable for practical applications and considering the price, I think the image quality is acceptable. However, if you're looking to buy a scope for high quality image capture, then I'd give the scope a pass. Of course, digital microscopes aren't just used for circuit boards, so let's take a closer look at this flower. Microscopes can be quite fun and educational, unlocking an unexplored world that you've never seen with your own eyes. I was lucky enough to find a ladybug in the garden, so let's take a closer look. Ladybugs are great at playing dead if they think they're in danger of being eaten. Once they feel safe, they start moving again. Well, that was a pretty neat party trick. And there is one last feature which I've left to last. On the back of the screen is an 18650 battery compartment. Yep, that's right, this scope has the option to be powered by a single battery. The only downside is the flexible LED spotlights can't run off the battery. However, the LED ring light on the camera does run off the battery. This does give you the option to use the scope in the field, when a power adapter might not be an option. For example, you might be having a pest problem in the garden. You could use the scope to easily identify what the problem on the plant is. However, going outside did reveal one issue. The screen isn't very good in direct daylight. So to summarise, the camera is adequate but it isn't going to impress you with sharp clear images. The screen isn't great in direct sunlight. And the camera and screen feel a bit plasticky. However, I can forgive these issues because considering the price, you're actually getting quite a lot for your money. At the time of filming, the scope is available for around 100 bucks. We're talking about a 260 times magnification scope with a large 8.5 inch display, which is great for circuit board work or any other up close work. Making this a great entry level scope, which I highly recommend. Now if you're considering buying this microscope and you'd like to support the content on my channel then there'll be affiliate links down in the video's description that give me a small kickback at no cost to you. Other than that, about wraps it up for this review. Thank you for watching, thanks to all my Patreon supporters for your continued support and I will see everyone in the next video. Bye for now.